about the time that Jesus was born, there were some individuals that were present. And when you read um, the roles that they played in scriptures, we can position ourselves uh, with respect to this season. Luke chapter 2 from verse 25 says now, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, cautiously and carefully observing the divine law and looking for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been divinely revealed or communicated to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And prompted by the Holy Spirit, he came into the temple enclosure. And when the parents brought in the little child Jesus to do for him what was customary according to the law, Simeon, this man, took him up in his arms and praised and thanked God and said, And now, Lord, you are releasing your servant to depart, to leave this world in peace, according to your word. For with my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have ordained and prepared before in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, to disclose what was before unknown, and to bring praise and honor and glory to your people, Israel. You know, what impresses me about Simeon was his attitude. Because the Bible says that he was looking for the consolation of Israel. To console is to comfort, is to give comfort. Israel was under colonial rule from Rome and God had promised a Messiah they knew that one day freedom would come one day independence would come one day things would change for the better it had happened before in their history they had been slaves in Egypt for over 400 years but one day God stepped in heard their prayers they had the Passover, and overnight, a nation of slaves became a free nation. And they knew that what happened then was a prophecy about what will happen in the future. So this man, Simeon, was waiting for the consolation, the comfort of Israel. And I feel that at this point in time, we are in that kind of a situation. There is crisis all around us. In our nation, we have our issues with insecurity. Right now, there are over 200 young girls who were kidnapped, taken away from their schools months ago. We don't know what's happening to them. Some of their moms have passed on from grief there are many others that have been kidnapped, apart from those 219. There are people right now in our nation who are going to sleep tonight in camps, internally displaced persons within their own country, who had to run away from their homes because danger was locking close by. We have soldiers fighting at the battlefront right now. Some have lost their lives at this time, and there are families that are grieving for them. Should we talk about our economy? Because we know in the past few weeks, things have not been looking rosy, because the price per barrel of crude oil in the international market has gone down, literally crashed. And then we look around our world. It's crisis here crisis there. Our world needs comfort at this time. Our world needs consolation at this time. And that's why it's so good for us to remind ourselves and to remind our world. It was for such a time as this 
that God sent Jesus. You know, when Christ was leaving, he said, I will send you another comforter. Another, because there was one already. He was the original comforter. When he was here, he said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come, that you may have life and have it in abundance. He said, peace I give to you. My peace I live with you, not as the world gives. He said, in the world you will have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So this is not a season to despair. It's not a season to be confused. It's a season to remember that over 2,000 years ago, God sent his son into our world, and our world will never remain the same again. Our answer came before our problems showed up. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Did I hear you say amen to that? Man's greatest problem will always be sin. Our world is a broken world. But Jesus paid the ultimate price for sin on the cross. And when we allow him to come in, into our individual lives, into our families, our businesses, our government, when we allow him to come into our nation, he comes with peace. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this season for you will be a season of consolation. It will be a season of comfort. Wherever you may have experienced pain, I pray Jesus will step in. Simeon said, Now, Lord, let your servant depart in peace. My eyes have seen your salvation. This is what I've been waiting for. Perhaps someone here has been praying, waiting for a moment of change, waiting for that turnaround. I pray that today, I pray that this season, this Christmas, will be that season you've been waiting for. That in Jesus' name, God will wipe away every tear. I pray in Jesus' name, he will take away every source of pain. I pray that this season will be a season of restoration. Restoration of relationships. Restoration of lost opportunities. Restoration of lost favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Restoration of broken homes. Restoration of broken businesses. And I pray in Jesus' name it will be a season of restoration for our nation. As we prepare for our elections next, next year, we pray that God will step in on our behalf and make this a season of joy for this nation. We pray for every nation in Africa. Wherever there may be war, we pray there shall be peace. We know there are countries battling with Ebola right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this scourge shall leave Africa. In the coming year, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that with me, say a powerful amen. amen. My eyes have seen your salvation. So the big question tonight is, do you have a personal relationship with Christ, the reason for the season? Like Simeon did, have you had cause to have a personal experience with the one who came with the solution to the problem of sin because the angel told his mom you shall call his name Jesus he shall save his people from their sins will you bow your head with me one moment and let's say together this most important of all prayers the prayer for the forgiveness of sins The wages of sin is death, the scriptures say. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You may be present here or watching on the internet. If you want us to say this prayer together, it's going to be a short prayer. My relationship with God is not okay, you say, Pastor, please pray with me that God should forgive me my sins. Can you please put your hand on your heart where you are and let's say this short prayer together. Perhaps you've been a Christian before, but you have backslidden into sin. You know it. Things are not right between you and God. 
you want God, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, can you also put your hand on your heart and let's pray together. God bless you for your honesty. If you're watching on the internet, please also put your hand on your heart if you want to say this prayer along with us. Perhaps you're present here physically. Can you please stand by your chair where you are? We'll be done in about one minute. If your hand is on your heart for this prayer, this is a very special moment. Can you please stand by your chair where you are? We'll be done in about one minute. It's a life-changing prayer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're standing, can you please say this prayer after me? Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for our brothers and sisters who said this prayer. Those present here, those watching on TV, and those watching on the internet. And we thank you because we know our sins are forgiven. The power of sin is broken over our lives. And the consequences of sin are removed from our lives today. And we ask, Father, let them know you personally. Let them learn to love you and to serve you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give Jesus a big hand clap? Please take your seat. God bless you. And congratulations for saying this prayer. If you're here, our officials give you a card while you were standing. Please fill it with accurate information. We have very important information to share with you. And please just hand it over to one of our officials before we leave. Or you may simply leave it on your seat if you're in one of the halls. If you're watching on TV or on the internet, please send us an email or call us on the phone. God bless you for making this decision today. Someone say a powerful amen. Amen. amen.